M S W Media. Thanks to Athletic Greens for supporting the Daily Beans. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to athleticgreens.com slash dailybeans to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. News, daily Beans, Daily Beans, Daily Beans, Daily Beans. Hello and welcome to the Daily Beans for Friday, June 24th, 2022. Today, Green, Gates, Brooks, Biggs, Gomert, and Perry all asked the White House for pardons for their roles in the 1-6 coup as revealed in the latest committee hearing. The Department of Justice issues at least eight subpoenas and raids Jeffrey Clark's house in the sprawling fraudulent electors investigation. Judge Kelly agrees to postpone the trial of the Proud Boys. And the Supreme Court overturns a century-old New York gun law restricting open carry. I'm Allison Gill. And I'm Dana Goldberg. Hi, Dana. Hi. Big day for the oh, investigation. My, I mean, breaking here and left and right and lots of stories, lots of news. Yeah, as I was on the plane yesterday, we got the information about the Department of Justice and their subpoenas and the fraudulent elector scheme. And then today we got the Clark stuff. I'm going to go over all of that. And I just wanted to quickly touch on the Supreme Court ruling that overturned an open carry restriction by striking down a century old law in New York. And this decision by the conservative court will lead to the overturning of all kinds of gun restrictions in multiple states, no doubt. And the result is that more people will die from gun violence as the Senate is about to pass gun legislation that now may be overturned by the Supreme Court as well. It's awful. It's an awful ruling. It, it's it's horrible to look at the Supreme Court and realize that they're probably more partisan than Congress right now when they should be neutral. It's just, it's infuriating. So, and, and you're right, that's exactly what's going to happen. This is not in any way going to save lives. It's going to, it's going to, we're going to lose a lot more. Yeah. And they also handed down a decision on Miranda rights saying that you can't sue uh, on, on Miranda rights if, if you weren't read them. And that's one of the, the like, ask anybody, what name one right. The first thing they'll say probably is the right to remain silent. And uh, now that is in danger as well. Absolutely disgusting. And and as you know, recently in a recent episode of the MSW Book Club in the book, Allow Me to Retort by Ellie Mastal, we we covered that right to remain, the Miranda case. So take a listen to that last week if you haven't heard it yet. All right. We do have a lot of news to get to. It's a big day. So let's hit the hot notes. Hot notes. All right. The committee hearing was big today. But to me, the bigger news was that federal investigators descended on the home of Jeffrey Clark, former Justice Department official, on Wednesday in connection with the department's sprawling inquiry into efforts to overturn the 2020 election, according to people familiar with the matter. It remained unclear exactly what the investigators may have been looking for or which investigating unit it was. Uh, Andy McKay believes it was the FBI. Maybe it was maybe it was the (laughs) NARA cops. Maybe it was uh, maybe it was the post office cops. I don't know. But Clark was central to Trump's unsuccessful effort in late 2020 to strong arm the nation's top prosecutors into supporting his claims of election fraud. The law enforcement action at Clark's home in suburban Virginia came just one day before the House committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol is poised to hold a hearing, which they did today, examining Trump's efforts to pressure the Justice Department after his election defeat. The hearing was expected to explore Mr. Clark's role in helping Trump bend the department to his will. And that's exactly what it did. You'll talk about that in a minute, Dana, and ultimately help in a bid to persuade officials in several key swing states to change the outcome of their election results. Trump considered and then abandoned a plan in in the days just before January 6th to put Mr. Clark in charge of the Justice Department as acting attorney general. At the time, Clark was proposing to send a letter to state officials in Georgia falsely stating the department had evidence that could lead Georgia to rescind its certification of Biden's victory in that key swing state. The search at Clark's home also came as a federal grand jury continued to issue subpoenas to at least eight people in four different states who were involved in the plan by Trump and his allies to subvert the normal workings of the electoral process by creating fraudulent slates of pro-Trump electors in states that were actually won by Biden. And I'll go over that more in a bit with those raids. And subpoenas. So Jeffrey Clark, who once served as the acting head of the Justice Department's civil division, helped in late December 2020 draft a letter to Governor Brian Kemp of Georgia stating without evidence that the Justice Department had identified significant concerns about the, quote, outcome of the election in Georgia and several other states, seven to be exact. 
The letter advised Kemp to call a special session of his state's legislature to create a separate slate of electors supporting Trump. I'd like to point out, I was pretty certain today's hearing, which was postponed from last week, wasn't postponed because the videographers were tired, (laughs) as the committee had told the public, but that perhaps it had something to do with the Department of Justice investigating the false slates of electors. And the fact that the DOJ executed a search warrant the day before the hearing actually took place tells me I was probably right. I think the Department of Justice wanted to get that search warrant executed before the committee alerted the public to the fact that there is evidence he was working directly with John Eastman. Yes, and AG, speaking of the draft letter Clark wrote, that was a focus of the committee hearing today as Rosen Engel and Donahue testified before the 1-6 panel. Now, some of the standout moments include evidence and testimony that a guy named Klukowski, who was working with Clark on his letter to Georgia asking them to throw out Biden's electors, was simultaneously working with no one other than John Eastman. Ding, ding, ding. And that, to me, was one of the biggest reveals of the day. Probably number two. We'll get to number one in a second. But folks who listened to the Daily Beans were aware of most of what the three Department of Justice officials testified about today. But back in September, when we first learned about the Clark letter to Georgia, which said falsely that the DOJ had found election irregularities, I tweeted this back in September. I said, has anyone connected the Eastman memo about electors to the Clark letter about electors? (laughs) And has anyone looked into whether Eastman and Clark had contact? This seems like a conspiracy. Clark creates the doubt and asks for new slates of electors. Then Eastman says how to use them. So today we saw that evidence (laughs) in the form of an email confirming Klukowski was the go-between. You are very good at what you do, my dear friend. And another standout moment was when the committee showed White House call logs from before the meeting where the entire DOJ leadership threatened to resign. Threatened to resign that show the White House was already referring to Jeffrey Clark as the acting attorney general, which I'm sure pissed off William Barr. <laughs> well, Bill Barr was gone by this time. It oh, was right, Rosen, right. Right. But yeah, he was like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. Now, something else that stood out was when uh, Donahue, he got a call from Cash Patel at DOD pressuring him to investigate the crackpot conspiracy that Italy was using satellites to change votes from Trump to Biden. That's the highest levels of the DOJ. They were even investigating that as ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But of course, they found no basis, in fact, that Italy changed votes at all. Now, I can't believe they actually went down that rabbit hole. They even called the attache to Italy. Amazing. I wonder if they were like, listen, we have to make this (laughs) fucking call. So if you can just not tell anyone this happened, we just need to cover our ass. (laughs) Uh, And finally, finally, there was a bombshell at the end of the hearing showing video testimony from Meadows' aide, Cassie Hutchinson. This was the big thing today. Who told the committee under oath that Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Gates, Mo Brooks, Andy Biggs, Louis Gohmert, and Scott Perry all asked the White House for pardons. All of them. And Matt Gates asked for a blanket pardon for, quote, any and all things from the beginning of time. <laughs> Sketchy motherfucker. Now, we already know his dad was trying to get a pardon for him. So that's, I mean, that's very telling at this point. Mm-hmm. Now, today's hearing is going to be the last until July as the committee weighs what Benny Thompson referred to as large amounts of new evidence, including that new documentary film footage handed over by Alex Holder. And new documents received by the National Archives. So uh, Thompson also alluded to potentially adding more hearings than the final two that are already expected. We know that there's two final hearings, but if more shit gets uncovered, there's no limit to what they can do with this. So I just want them to keep laying this groundwork, keep laying it down. Keep going. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really interested in what they've recently got from the National Archives, you know? Absolutely. And this is big federal agents investigating January 6th, federal agents. Federal agents on Wednesday dropped subpoenas on people in multiple locations, widening the probe of how political activists supporting Trump tried to use invalid electors, we call them fraudulent, to thwart Biden's victory in 2020. Agents conducted court-authorized law enforcement activity Wednesday morning at different locations. This was a coordinated nationwide effort. FBI officials confirmed to the Post, so it was the FBI, okay. One was at the home of Brad Carver, a Georgia lawyer who allegedly signed a document claiming to be a Trump elector. The other was the Virginia home of Thomas Lane, who worked on the Trump campaign efforts in Arizona and New Mexico. The FBI officials did not identify the people associated with those addresses, but public records list each of the locations as the home addresses of these people. (laughs) So (laughs) they would confirm. But, you know, picked up the old phone book like Navin Johnson and said, be somebody. And there they were. 
Among those who received a subpoena Wednesday was David Schaefer, chairman of the Georgia Republican Party, who served as a Trump elector in that state. That's according to people familiar with the investigation. Schaefer's lawyer declined to comment, probably for the best. Separately, at least some of the would-be Trump electors in Michigan received subpoenas, according to a person who spoke on the condition of anonymity. But it was not immediately clear whether that activity was related to the federal probe or state-level criminal inquiry. So probably the federal probe. <laughs> I, would, I mean, I would think. If everyone else was hit on the same day. The precise nature of the information being sought by the Justice Department at the homes of Carver and Lane was not immediately clear. I can guess what it is. Officials have previously said the Justice Department and the FBI were examining the issue of fraudulent electors, whom Trump and others hoped might be approved by state legislators in a last-ditch bid to keep Trump in the White House. Until now, actually, I think the last-ditch bid was the violence on the Capitol, but whatevs. Until now, however, <laughs> those investigative efforts seemed to primarily involve talking to people in Republican circles who knew of the scheme and objected. So, like, friendly folks, right? Like, people who were asked to be fraudulent electors and said, no, dude. That's what we were limited to. Now they're going after people who were into it. The subpoenas issued Wednesday suggested the Justice Department is moving to question at least some of those who allegedly agreed to pursue the effort. FBI agents delivered a subpoena to Lane on Wednesday morning at his home in Virginia, according to a person who spoke anonymously. After leaving the Trump campaign, Lane has worked for the RNC and their election efforts in Virginia. A video posted online in 2020 appears to show Lane handing out paperwork for electors at the Arizona Republican Party's December 14th alternate elector signing ceremony at a hotel in Phoenix with Rudy. Earlier this year, Justice Department sent subpoenas and sought interviews with some 15 people around the country who were slated to be Trump electors if he had won their states, but were replaced by other Trump supporters on the day of the Electoral College vote. FBI agents also served a search warrant at the home of Nevada GOP Chairman Michael McDonald, not the musician, and seized his phone as part of the fake elector probe, according to local news outlet KLAS. A second warrant was issued to a state GOP secretary, James DeGraffenreid, I guess. But uh, FBI agents could not track him down on Wednesday. <laughs> so huh. he's on the lam. <laughs> That's hilarious. All told, eight people at least were served with subpoenas in a nationwide coordinated effort by the Department of Justice, the do-nothing Department of Justice, expanding their investigation, which now goes all the way up to Jeffrey Clark. At least. At least. It's a beautiful thing. In AG, a federal judge on Wednesday postponed the trial of five members of the extremist group Proud Boys after several defendants and prosecutors warned that the planned release of a public report and witness transcripts from the high-profile House investigation into January 6, 2021, the Capitol attack, could upend preparations. So they're putting this on hold because they got bigger fish to fry at this moment. U.S. District Judge Timothy J. Kelly of Washington, D.C. said at the hearing that he reluctantly reached the decision to delay the scheduling August 8th trial of former Proud Boys Chairman Henry Enrique Otario and four others on seditious conspiracy and other charges, but acknowledged strong concerns from prosecutors and defense lawyers that the House Select Committee investigating the breach may divulge key evidence that they have not seen. The move to a trial now set for December came as televised House hearings this month that have focused in part on alleged actions by Proud Boys members amid what lawmakers say is a potentially criminal behavior by then-President Donald Trump and others who falsely claim the 2020 election was stolen before the attack on Congress. The Proud Boys judge ruled Wednesday after Justice Department senior officials warned a lawyer for the House panel last week that by not giving prosecutors access to about a thousand transcripts of private witness interviews before their planned public release in September, lawmakers were complicating prosecutors' quote, ability to investigate and prosecute those who engaged in criminal conduct. Two defendants opposed any delay, AG. So mm -hmm. this is a quote. Tario believes that an impartial jury will never be achieved in Washington, D.C., whether the trial's in August, December, or next year. That's from Tario's attorney. Now, Ethan Ordine of the Seattle area opposed a delay unless he was freed from pretrial detention. Yeah, of course. Dickhead. Yeah, just, yeah, for sure. Just let me out. Can we do this in Christmas and, and get, have me get out of jail until then? Yeah, fuck you. I mean, it seems reasonable. Not. Now, Nordine's attorneys, David B. Smith and Nicholas Smith, argued that forcing their client to choose between a fair trial or a speedy one after he has been incarcerated since April 2021 feeds the suspicion that he is being held not on the rule of law basis of public safety, but in order to punish him before conviction or to squeeze him into waiving his right to a trial. 
which is just bullshit. But Kelly told both sides to prepare for jury selection starting December 12th and warned that he planned to hold trial through the holiday season, except for the federal holidays of Christmas and New Year's Day. So the judge is delaying, but he's not fucking around. Yeah. Merry Christmas to us. All right. Whew. What a day for justice. Um, that is a lot. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, there was something else in the news, too, that Andrew and I are going to go over on uh, this coming Wednesday's cleanup on aisle 45. And that's that something about Sidney Powell. The, the Department of Justice has asked the court to consider conflicts of interest, but for the fact that Sidney Powell is paying for a bunch of the Oath Keepers defense lawyers. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we don't have that decision yet, but it's Judge Amit Mehta, and he doesn't put up with a lot of bullshit. So that's going to be really interesting to see what kind of considerations the court has for conflicts of interest as, you know, Sidney Powell, who raised money fraudulently through her Defend a Republic PAC, which has been under criminal investigation since September, is paying for their defense. There's conflicts of interest there. We'll see what he has to say. All right. Whew. We'll be right back with the good news. Stick around. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey, y'all. I started taking Athletic Greens every day, every morning, one scoop of AG1 because I wanted more energy and an optimized immune system. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. It supports all the things. And I want to thank Athletic Greens for their support. And now is a great time for you to start using AG1 by Athletic Greens as part of your daily habit because they're offering you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase when you go to athleticgreens.com slash dailybeans. And I love that Athletic Greens uses the best of the best in their products based on the latest science, which they constantly update based on clinical research. And uh, with constant product iterations all while tasting great, Athletic Greens is good for you. They do good things, too. They are a climate-neutral certified company, which is hard to get. And in 2020, Athletic Greens donated over 1.2 million meals to kids in need. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. Very easy habit to pick up, and it replaces multiple bottles of pills and scoops of adaptogens and superfoods and probiotics from the fridge. It's so convenient. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and those five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash dailybeans. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash dailybeans to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And you know what else is good for your health? Sleep. I used to have the hardest time falling asleep and staying asleep and then waking up feeling groggy and sore. But that all changed thanks to Helix. Turns out I was sleeping on a mattress made for someone else. But Helix Sleep has this quick online sleep quiz at helixsleep.com slash dailybeans. Takes two minutes and it will match you with the perfect mattress for your sleep preferences and body type. It will give you the best night's sleep of your life. Everyone is unique and every body is unique. So they have several different mattresses to choose from. They have soft, medium, firm mattresses great for cooling you down if you sleep hot and even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size sleepers. I took the Helix quiz. I was matched with the Helix Midnight just two minutes. Two minutes later, my whole life had changed because I prefer a medium firm mattress and I sleep on my side. I'm a side sleeper. And now all my sleep problems are gone. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the two minute quiz at helixsleep.com slash daily beans, order the mattress that they match you to, and the mattress comes right to your door ship for free. They have a 10 year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk free. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans available. So a great night's sleep is never far away. Helix is awesome, but you don't have to take my word for it. They were awarded number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. Over 12,000 five-star reviews. They've been recommended by multiple doctors of sleep medicine and chiropractors for a go-to solution for improving your sleep. And right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for listeners at helixsleep.com slash dailybeans. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X, sleep.com slash dailybeans for up to $200 off and two free pillows. All right, everybody, welcome back. It's time for the good news. Who likes good news, everyone? Then good news, everyone. Good news, good news. And if you have any good news, photos of your pets, pets that are up for adoption in your area, uh, Halloween photos, any any pictures, happy place pictures, 
Easter bunny photos. Ooh, Easter bunny photos. Those are so funny, right? Because the kids always like, ah, you know, oh, yeah. terrified. Santa photos. Whatever you got, send them to us um, at uh, dailybeanspod.com and click on contact. AG, I've seen a little, I, I took a sneak peek and I feel like our listeners are trying to heal me and kill me all at the same time. <laughs> There's a lot of babies. <laughs> this is going to be amazing. <laughs> your, your, your COVID ovaries are going to be like... <clears throat> <laughs> my co- my covo my coveries yeah your coveries <laughs> and i really i want to encourage everybody to send in your whoopee stories we can't be out we can't be out of whoopee stories so send those in too and first up oh my god right ah oh, for f- from <laughs> from anonymous pronoun she and her my dear beans queens I am trying to kill Dana since... No. Uh, My dear Beans Queens, I appreciate you every day, but I could not have appreciated you more than during these hearings. When I was unable to listen to the January 6th hearings, I knew AG was there doing it for me and that I would hear the news from an honest, unfiltered standpoint. Oh my God, thank you so much. Good news. As of yesterday, I am a grandmother of four. It was a busy day keeping up with the boys while waiting for their sister to arrive. Meet the new baby this perfect baby look at the gerber curl i know everything about her the girl oh, the mouth look at the chin okay i know i, want to I know chubby it gets little me. arms and yeah it's not the end of this ag the next one's from john pronouns he him hi ladies of the beans Damn. long time listener with some good news to help cheer dana up my <laughs> wife and i have become grandparents twice this year that gets us to grand total of three a boy born in february joins his two-year-old brother and a girl born two weeks ago our son with the two boys lives in New Jersey. We'll be visiting us in North Carolina with his fam at the end of June. So we'll have all three together for the first time. Dana, I hope you get well soon. Look at these kids. All these babies in North Kakalaka. Look at the dog. Look at the photo bomb dog. I know the dog in the back like I used to be number one. Oh my God, look at that chunker. Look at that little... I know. Do you understand the leg rolls that are hiding under that onesie? Yeah, I know, right? (laughs) Can you even imagine? And look at the next one. Picture this. The leg rolls hiding under that onesie. And then there's a perfect (gasps) infant. I mean, seriously, listeners, thank you. If you ever want to share me up baby pictures, they never make me sad. Like, I mean, Uh, I'm sad that I won't have one, but yeah. Are those hedgehogs on that blankie? Uh, Yes, they are. That's important. That's important. Okay. Oh, so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> You're right. How are I'm good. Is doing? Okay. I'm good. Next up from Francine, pronoun she and her. Allison says she loves frogs. This is Herman. He looks scary. <laughs> I'm laughing that fun. I got pictures of adorable babies and Francine's like, Allison likes frogs. Here's Herman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's because my ovaries are shut down. We had a liquidation oh sale God. a long time ago. The factory's <sighs> closed. Uh, he lives in our <laughs> coilless pond. We call the pond the love pad. Oh, wow. oh, it's a little old place where we can get together because it's filled with lily pads and Herman has frog orgies in it on a regular basis. Also so, why this is for so, you, AJ. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> cute, adorable babies and grandchildren for you. Frog orgies for AG. That's right. We love him for entertaining us and living his best life. Look at this guy. I mean, he does look like he gets some on a daily basis. And then I got to do the next one, too, because look at these guys. Oh, from uh, Matt Cat, uh, Matt Cat Amoeba, pronouns she and her. Love your show. Can't wait to listen to it every day. Meet Tesla, big dog and Lizzie, little dog on their way to go swimming. Dude, every time we take the dog swimming, they know where we're going. And they're in the back flipping out i'm wondering if uh, Tesla and Lizzie do the same thing. Oh, they have to be there in a minute. So sweet. All right, this next one's from Patty, pronouns she and her. Hello, my very dear beans. About six years ago, I bought my aunt the Dammit doll. I inherited it back when she passed at 98. That's a good run. I let me tell you, it's getting quite a workout during these amazing (laughs) hearings. You just grab it by the leg and slap it as hard as you can against a hard surface. It's somewhat therapeutic. Nice. It's traditional to attend the county fair and take a picture of an animal that would never be a pet. Here I am with my niece, grandnephew, and an unnamed beauty. For pet tax, I submit a picture of three of mine getting along and keeping each other warm. I'm sending good vibes to the DOJ to take the J6 committee information and indict, indict, indict. Love to be in crew. You are all the absolute best. <sighs> Look at that. Oh, what a oh, gorgeous. Oh, Jesus. Literally. 
The kid That's is a like massive yeah! boa constrictor. I know Look at that kid. That kid could be lunch. I mean, what a gorgeous so family, excited. though. Yeah, very beautiful. And the kitty snuggles. Oh, it's like a frog orgy, but for cats. Hmm. All right. Next up from Sean, pronouns he and him. Listening to Steve and his fear of fish reminded me <laughs> of a day when I was camping and taking a soak in a lake in Connecticut. There were these small fish, about four inches long, uh-oh, which had taken to nibbling on my legs. I believe they mistook the hair on my legs for tasty morsels. This was all well and good. It tickled. It was quite entertaining to my wife and I. And then it happened. Unnoticed by me, one of these fish had apparently decided to seek out new ground and was hovering around my chest. My leg hairs were long, but my chest hairs were far longer. Then it struck my nipple. Oh, my God. The resulting squawk that came forth for me was a cross between a young girl first encountering an unpleasant <laughs> scare and a water buffalo which had been shot in the ass by an arrow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my wife peed herself laughing, but we were in a lake, so I have no proof. For my part, I also laughed for quite a while, but my hands were over my nipples if I ever stopped moving for more than a few seconds or for the rest of that weekend. Pet tax. My second wife and I are foster parents for more cats than I can recall. I often joke that my wife, Allison, great name, is one dead husband away from fully meeting the definition of crazy cat lady. Putting our sanity aside, I present to you our latest fur baby, Angus. Oh. Okay. So now we have a cross between infants and kitties. And Angus has got milk on its mouth. No good. Can I have Angus? Can you just email him to me? Oh, my God. I don't think that's legal. Oh, come on. It's just email. <laughs> okay, true. Just just upload him with the transport device and send him over. <laughs> Looks like an Angus, too. Like I mean, ginger. so much joy and sweet pictures and the good news today. Thank you all so much. Uh, milk was a good choice in this particular case. Thank you for all this. Thanks for the frog orgies and the infants. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate the pictures of the babies. <laughs> Awkward transition after that comment, but thank here's, you. Here's some inf beautiful babies for Dana and some frog orgies for AG. I am actually very proud of that, that that is how we are delineated, my friend. Yeah. Um, and uh, hey, I, I can uh, appreciate a good frog orgy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they don't make me ovulate, but I can still appreciate them. <laughs> frog orgies make me ovulate. See, that's there you the go. Thing. Exactly. And I know you can appreciate a baby. <laughs> I can. I can. <laughs> frog babies. <laughs> All right. Oh, shit. It's definitely the end of the week. It really is. I hope everybody had a great Friday. Um, I think, let me double check, but I, I think we have the happy hour later today. Um, yeah, we do at four o'clock Pacific. If you're a patron, you can join the happy hour. It's a Zoom call where you ask me questions and I answer them. And we talk about news that we missed in today's show that, br that breaks tomorrow that doesn't come out until Monday. And then, of course, we have an episode of MSW Book Club on Sunday and an uh, episode of Muller She Wrote. So look for those. And then uh, Dana, you and I will be back on Monday with the beans. Any final thoughts before we head out for the weekend? No, no final thoughts. Just everyone have a good weekend. Find some joy. Yes, find some joy, everybody. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of the planet. Take care of your mental health. Vote blue over Q and up with frog orgies. I've been AG. And I've been DG. Nems the beans. The Daily Beans is written and executive produced by Allison Gill with additional research and reporting by Dana Goldberg and Amy Carrero. Sound design and editing is by Desiree McFarlane, with art and web design by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios. Music for The Daily Beans is written and performed by They Might Be Giants, and the show is a proud member of the MSW Media Network, a collection of creator-owned podcasts dedicated to news, politics, and justice. For more information, please visit mswmedia.com. MSW Media. <laughs>